Liam, since we have spoken Northern Ireland and the Republic, I have qualified for the European Championships. They join Wales and England. It's going to be some summer in France, isn't it? Incredible. Absolutely <coughs> incredible. You know, Northern Ireland, first time ever in their history. Michael O'Neill, so near possibly the chop at one stage, had anything but a good start. But I always knew... He couldn't buy a goal, never mind a couldn't point. Couldn't buy a goal and, and I felt for him because I, I knew that he was working so hard behind the scenes and the entire infrastructure. So many fans only actually see that they turn up on the night of the game, they watch the game, they have a go at the manager if it doesn't go right and they go home. But if they stop to analyse it and if they had the benefit of knowing what's going on behind the scenes, Adrian, the, the work that Michael was putting into the infrastructure and it needed a lot of work. Uh, that, that was something had been allowed to slip, to be honest. And he was building from the base up. He was put, laying good foundations. Unfortunately, at senior level, it wasn't happening. And then, bang, comes the European Championships. Tough group. Some really tough games. We get off to a great start. And to be honest, we never looked back. Uh, from the great start we had, we've been fabulous. That togetherness is there now. It's like a good club side. It's a family. Uh, and you know they're all for one. Some of our players struggle to hold down their positions at their respective clubs. You know that yourself. Mm -hmm. But when they put on a Northern Ireland jersey and they take that field at Windsor Park or abroad, they are absolutely virtually unbeatable at the moment. Well, I suppose the, the most obvious man to say that to is Kyle Lafferty. You know what I mean? He, he, he turns it so a wee bit like Healy. Aye. To an extent, you know, mirror image when he yeah. puts on the Northern Ireland shirt, he becomes yeah. a different entity. Exactly. Uh, a carbon <clears throat> copy, I think, of David Healy just could not cut it and score the same amount of goals at club level, put on a Northern Ireland jersey. They're a different animal. And Lafferty has now become a cult hero at Windsor Park. I'm there for all the internationals. I thoroughly enjoy them. The fans, there's a real good feel-good factor. And as I often say, Adrian, when our politicians sometimes plop, uh, plumb the, the depths of despair, sport comes to our rescue. Northern Ireland have given the entire province a great feel-good factor. And I applaud each and every one. And I just hope that the security situation in France lets it go ahead. I have reservations about that, to be honest. And I just sincerely hope, particularly with the Republic now qualifying as well, they look dead and buried. They've got another great Northern Ireland legend, Martin O'Neill, managing the Republic team. And I am so delighted for both of them. They're going to both be there for the first time, I'm virtually certain, in history that both qualified for a major tournament at the same time. And I think it's fabulous. Isn't it fabulous too that there's two lads, basically two Northern Ireland lads, that live, you know, only a few miles apart <coughs> from each other and Northern Ireland and the Republic are there too. It yeah. should be a, a case of great celebration for everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. <coughs> you know, I know the Northern Ireland fans are Northern Ireland fans and the Republic fans are Republic fans, but you take off the political hats and look at it from a, port, a sporting perspective, I think it's a fabulous achievement. And I think what Martin O'Neill has achieved, because he had a really tough group with the Germans mm -hmm. and all that. And you know, at one stage they looked dead and buried, as I said, but he moulded a great togetherness down there as well and now with a difficult playoff behind them they have now qualified they're there on merit as northern ireland are northern ireland topped their group incredible and they're both for france i just hope that we get the the peace and security that we need in france to let that competition go ahead because i'll tell you something there won't be that many left in the province when, <laughs> when that's on. Interesting too, you know, people talk about the group. Uh, Hungary were not an Ireland group and they ended up qualifying as well. People said that they were a poor side. I remember John O'Neill and he was describing it possibly the worst side he had seen in yeah. Windsor Park and Dunkies and yet they go on, they qualify. Yeah, yeah, incredible. And some big teams not there, Adrian, mm -hmm. as well. You no, know, I think in Romania not there either. So I think it's absolutely incredible. And, and when I look at Northern Ireland and all we've been through and and there we are, we're going to the European Championships, proud and with our heads held high. The Republic likewise, and I know we have our differences in many times, but I tend to look past those things. I look at the big picture. I look at things from a sporting perspective. I'm not really a political man, to be honest. And I'm so proud that both teams are there. I'm so proud for both managers who I know personally. Uh, and, and I just can't wait to see how. I think we will both give good accounts of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think we could both get through the qualifying stages over there. I the draw is going so. to be good, isn't it? You know, next month, December. The draw isn't? next month, December is going to be <laughs> fantastic. Aye, of course, it is going to, we're all going to be looking at who's out of that pot and who's out of that pot. And at this minute in time, I would say the players don't give a damn now, Adrian. They're but there. But who would you like, Liam? If you were sitting here now, let's put it this way, I have often thought about it. Who would you really like as the number one seed in your group? France. You'd like France? I would you? love the home nation. Uh-huh. 
and I'd love to shove it up the mainland. Because, well, now, I, I listened to some of the boys on Radio 5 Live and they were saying they got, they, and, and others on Today FM, that they, they're tipping France as the team to beat next Absolutely, summer. absolutely. Full of quality footballers, France, the home nation, uh, the entire nation behind them. The, 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 the food they eat over there will suit them. Wouldn't suit me, to be honest, but the food they eat over there will suit them. But let's be honest, if you were there and you wanted the big guns, you know France. I would want France, definitely. I'll tell nice you something. Either. If I was in that Northern Ireland dressing room or Republic of Ireland yeah. dressing room, I wouldn't need them to open the door of the dressing room. I would take it of the hinges on the way out if I was going out to play against France and France. What about Spain? It'd be lovely to have them. Oh, too. lovely. Or absolutely. Italy. Oh, yeah. Or Germany. Oh, well, sure. Uh, or England. Oh, of course. <laughs> I, I, well, funny, funny you mention England. They would be a close runner up to France and who I would want because uh-huh. I'm not a big lover of them, Adrian. You know, I think they blow their trumpet far too much. And, and to be honest, uh, I'm proud to be from the wee country I am and I would love to take them down a peg or two. In fact, <laughs> in fact don't push me much more. I'll maybe say that's England I want instead of France. <laughs> Liam, thanks very much for joining us as always and a very happy Christmas Christmas. to uh, all our viewers and everybody involved obviously with the the McLean's network so thank you very much. I would have to say the same. Happy Christmas to all the viewers and all the, the, the McLean people.